the city of Bridgeport considering a land purchase to house most of its city government operations. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, the city of Bridgeport is looking at the potential purchase of four parcels of land that could ultimately house much of the city government operations. The city council holds a public hearing during their meeting tonight on the purchase of land that currently houses waste connections on the west side of J Street from Highway 26 to 17th Street. Mayor Gail Byer says the idea grew out of long-time plans to update the city's utility shop. We started looking at what it would take to renovate and add on to the current shop we have. And in order to meet all the ADA, since you start messing with it, then you have all these guidelines you have to follow. It would have been around $1.5 million. Uh, so we started looking at other options and it um, was mentioned to us that waste connections could be up for sale. Buyer says with approval and completion of the sale, the property has room to immediately house utility and much of the streets department's needs. She says it could also become the future home of City Hall, possibly with a new council chamber, which would allow the city to then sell off smaller several properties around town and get them back onto the tax rolls. Well, the May primary election is this coming Tuesday, and Minotaur residents are encouraged to attend an open house tomorrow to learn more about Proposition 1, the ballot initiative that proposes implementation of a 1% sales and use tax in the city. Supporters say the tax would fund essential infrastructure improvements, enhance community safety, and support downtown redevelopment projects. The open house aims to provide residents with detailed information about the proposition, allowing them to make informed decisions ahead of the May 14th election. Jordan Diedrich with Twin Cities Development explains the benefits for voting for this proposition. Minotaur currently has no sales tax. Um, so when a visitor or a resident shops in Minotaur, like the dollar store that they have there, um, they don't get anything from that. But if they go shop at Scotts Bluff or Gearing, they're supporting Gearing and Scotts Bluff. Um, so the city council of Minotaur is very proactive. Um, they love the community and they want to, um, they want to try and grow Minotaur. Um, the downtown has a lot of empty buildings. Their stop signs and their road signs are very, very, very bad shape. They've been there for a very long time. Um, their roads need fixed as well. Um, and then also code enforcement and safety. Um, and so there's a lot of um, great things that can happen in Minotaur. Um, they just need the support to do it. The Minotaur Proposition 1 Committee is hosting the event, which will be held this Friday at 6 p.m. at the Minotaur Community Room, located at 313 Main Street. We'll have more news right after this. Looking for free instead of fees? Platte Valley Bank can help you keep your finances moving forward with no ATM fees. Whether you're headed to the lake, the mountains, or just to the grocery store, you can enjoy the freedom of free ATM access anywhere, anytime. Platte Valley Bank. You belong here. Morrill County Community Hospital and the behavioral health providers are here to help. Amber Dean specializes in mental health care, which includes medication and therapy across a person's lifespan. Melody Lysi helps people deal with a wide range of behavioral problems, from depression and anxiety to child psychiatry. Our dedicated team is committed to you and our community every time. At Morrill County Community Hospital, Bridgeport, Nebraska. Exceptional care, right here at home. Welcome back. Staff at St. Agnes Elementary was quick to respond to a small fire Wednesday, which limited damage to the Catholic school. Crews were called to a possible fire in the basement around 11 a.m., but prior to firefighters' arrival, staff had put the fire out with an extinguisher and were evacuating the school. Firefighters arrived within two minutes of the initial dispatch and provided manpower with ventilating the smoke out of the basement and checking the area for any hot spots. 
The investigation determined that staff was keeping some food heated up with some canned sterno heaters, and when unattended, the radiant heat caught some nearby combustibles on fire, causing smoke and heat damage. Well, Congressman Adrian Smith slams the United States Postal Service after it announced it will transfer operations of the North Platte Mail Processing and Distribution Center to Denver and convert the North Platte facility to a local processing center. This decision leaves rural Nebraska without a postal service distribution center. I'm concerned it is another in a long line of postal service actions that have been bad for rural America. I'm also concerned this decision will lead to greater delays and inefficiencies. It appears our clearly voiced concerns were simply disregarded by the Postal Service, sadly, just as they've been previously. This is unacceptable for Nebraska communities, businesses, seniors, who are particularly reliant on the Postal Service for delivery of prescription medicines, for, for just one example. Failing to restore customer confidence is a losing strategy. And to achieve the reforms that are desperately needed for the Postal Service to overcome its serious fiscal problems, the Postal Service really needs to focus more on improving service. And Serve Nebraska is in the process of seeking nominations for this year's Step Forward Awards. Now and in their 10th year, they are working to spread the word of these awards as far as possible. Executive Director Kathy Plager told KNEB News there are a number of categories for nominations. So we have an adult, we have a youth category, um, we have an AmeriCorps National Service category, we have corporate categories, and this year we actually have a mentorship category we've added to the mix. We have a disaster category. So there's a lot of different areas that people could look at and fit into. Nominations close June 1st, and the nomination form can be found at serve.nebraska.gov. Honorees are selected by the governor and awarded at a ceremony October 4th. The wait is over. Ensemble entry doors exclusively from Renewal by Anderson have arrived with an incredible offer. Secure, timeless style, elegant features, customized countless ways with the legendary quality of Renewal by Anderson. Right now, you get 20% off every Ensemble entry door. No money down, no interest, and no payments for 12 months. No payments for a year. Please scan the QR code on your screen or visit rbawyoming.com now to book your free estimate. Ensemble entry doors. The wait is over. Now the latest from the Scotts Bluff Body and Paint Sports Desk. Scotts Bluff Body and Paint. You're driving home our reputation. Spring signing season starting to wrap up, plus local baseball teams in action. The focus for today's update here on the TV side of things. Scotts Bluff High School yesterday for a late afternoon stop for a couple of senior girls signing to continue their athletic careers. First up, it was Emily Reyes Rodriguez who had her long-term future in mind when signing to play soccer at a school in Minnesota. So I'm going to Dakota County Tech School because um, they have a really good welding program and I really want to be an under underwater welder someday so I think it just gave me a better opportunity to go there. Reyes Rodriguez thinking academics along with soccer and also setting a new bar for her entire family with this big picture milestone. I think it's just pretty nice because I'm going to be the first one to go to college so I just think that's awesome because I'm the first one in my family, so, and to play a sport in college. 
The Scotts Bluff girls soccer team coming off another winning season that included a trip to a district final this past weekend. And Reyes Rodriguez says the coaches and team a big reason why she's made it to this point. I think they've prepared me a lot. Like when I first started playing for freshman year, it was like my first year playing officially on a team. So I think they like better me as a person and like I'm a lot better because of them. And I like really thank them for that. Scotts Bluffs Emily Reyes Rodriguez heading to Minnesota to play soccer and further her education at Dakota County Technical School. Next up, it was Scotts Bluff softball star Tatum Hireman who will look to shine as she chose Southeast Community College in Beatrice. It's very exciting for me. Um, I worked really hard personally on my own time, and so I'm very excited to go play at the collegiate level. Heimerman is starred for the Bearcats for multiple years. She's the total package of a player with batting average, power, and speed offensively, while playing stellar defense, also pitched this past year for head coach Dan Fox. One word describes Tatum, and she's just a competitor, um, and her she's she's got a lot of grit, and, and she's been working hard since she was, when I know her since she was a freshman, so um, doesn't surprise me she picked softball, but she's, um, she's got a, a great future in the sport, so. Heimerman, a major part of multiple trips to the state softball tournament for Scotts Bluff, the program a big part of her time at Scotts Bluff High School. Um, definitely my best memories are playing with the girls. Um, that's always the best. I've played with very, a lot of girls, um, so yeah, just and then our wins, obviously, going to the state tournament, winning our very first game at state was huge. Tatum Heimerman set to play Region 9 softball at Southeast Community College in Beatrice. Staying on the diamond, it's the opening day of the Region 9 baseball tournament in Colorado Springs. WNCC, the number four seed, they're in action this afternoon against Lamar Community College. A win, and they'll play top seed Southeast tomorrow. A loss, they'll play again today against the loser of that opening game of the tournament. The double elimination tourney winner will head to the district final next weekend down in Arizona. And Legion Baseball tonight and this weekend, the West Coast Zephyrs opened their season last night, beating Douglas, Wyoming 12-5 at Cleveland Field. Tonight it's a junior-senior doubleheader at home against Shadron. We'll have the seniors game on 107.3. The trail starting at around 7 o'clock or so. Gearing will open Sunday at Wheatland as they get their season started. That one on KMOR with Jeff Kelly at about 145. That's the latest today from right here at the Scotts Bluff Body and Paint Sports Desk. I'm Chris Cottrell. What does it take to get beef from our Nebraska ranches to your table? It takes grit, compassion, and constant care that doesn't stop for weekends or holidays. No matter what it takes, we're proud to raise beef that brings more nutrition to every plate and more enjoyment with every bite. From our families to yours, beef, it's what's for dinner. Brought to you by Nebraska's beef farmers and ranchers. your community calendar brought to you by Riverstone Bank. The community calendar is brought to you by Riverstone Bank. We're local and we love our community.
Tired of feeling stuck? Not sure if you are on the right track? Platte Valley Bank can help keep your finances moving forward with checking account options to fit your lifestyle and an online account chooser to make finding the right account easy. Control your financial future with helpful budgeting tools and automatic savings plans. Now is the time to enjoy the ride with Platte Valley Bank. You belong here. And finally tonight, the Buckle in Uptown Scottsbluff has moved to a new location and they had their grand opening celebration yesterday. The new location offers more space and gives the store a new look. General Manager Lupe Ayala says the move was necessary for the store to grow and generate more business. She tells KDB News the Buckle has been at the mall since 1987 and has not been updated since. We have the beautiful front um, windows, not just windows, but just like the, you know, um, I think we have a great curve appeal now um, and it adds a lot of value to the mall. Store hours are Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Sundays from noon to 6. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. We'll see you here next time.